Hi, this is Catherine of ResinObsession.com and I'm here today to show you how to make your own two-color bangle bracelet using epoxy resin and a mold. Now before we get started, just a few safety things. You'll notice my purple hands in the video today. These are nitrile gloves. You'll also need to make sure you work in a well-ventilated area. And today I'll be working on a surface that's coated with wax paper. So that way if I spill any of my resin, I can easily clean it up or I can just throw the wax paper away. So we're gonna start with Bengal Mold 414 and you would want to coat it very well with the Cast and Craft Mold Release Spray. Allow it to dry. That'll take approximately 20 to 30 minutes to get a good dry on it. Now to save time, I've gone ahead and mixed our epoxy resin and I know that this mold uses about four ounces so I've mixed our resin in our 10 ounce reusable mixing cup and I've been letting it sit for a couple of minutes to let the bubbles rise to the top. So today we'll be using the Resin Obsession brand powder pigments and I've gone ahead and I've mixed up a little bit of the fluorescent green along with some of the fluorescent yellow. And I picked these two colors because I wanted something kind of bright but I also wanted something that when the colors start to blend you're going to get a third color that you really like. So be sure to consult a color wheel before you mix your colors to make sure the end result is something you're going to want. So the powder pigments come in one ounce bags or you can buy our sampler pack where you get a quarter ounce of many different colors. And what I suggest doing is taking a bit of the powder pigment and mixing it with a bit of the resin. The powder pigment does mix very well, however you just want to make sure that you don't get big clumps of the powder in your resin. So I've mixed it here and now I'm going to add it to our epoxy resin. <clears throat> Obviously there's no right or wrong here. So just add the amount that you want based on the final color that you want to get. Mix well. Now this resin has already been properly mixed, so we just need to mix it long enough to get the color blended in there very well. So it's a bright color, but you know what? I'm feeling extra cheery today. It's springtime, so I'm going to go ahead and add in the rest of that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mix in the green as well. Okay, now here comes the fun part, and that is actually pouring the resin into your mold. So what you're going to want to do is just pour your resins at the same time into your molds, or into your mold. Okay, you're going to want to pour one at one end and one at the other, and pour at about the same speed. and then just let them blend how they're going to blend. Don't worry if you overfill. Your resin will contract a little bit as it cures and it's going to actually settle down into the mold. And if it doesn't, don't worry because we can sand it off later. So there we go. So now your resin is going to mix a little bit here at your ends, but that's okay. That's what we want. Now, if you want an even more dramatic mix, you could come back, say, in 20 to 30 minutes as your resin is starting to cure and actually put your stir stick down in there and actually push some of the resin over to one side and then bring in and push some back, and that'll get an even more dramatic mix on that. Okay, so now you're going to want to take and cover your resin so that way you don't get any dust or particles on it while it's curing and we'll be back to check on it in a little bit. Okay, so it's been about an hour since I poured the resin and I'm gonna check and see what's going on. So let's take our lid off. All right, and if, so you can see, there's a few bubbles that have risen to the top of our piece. Okay, so you can see some little clusters of bubbles here and there's a couple bubbles there and here and there. So one of the great things about doing an opaque resin is 
bubbles generally don't show up quite as easily or at least aren't as easily seen as they are in clear resin. But what I'll go ahead and, and do is just take a small toothpick and the resin's already starting to cure a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and just try and pop them. I'm a little late on getting these. Um, and that's what happens when you don't set a timer. So they're not wanting to pop very easily. But one of the nice things and one of the reasons why I told you to overfill your mold just a little bit is I'm going to show you how to sand these off so you're still going to have a really nice bracelet. So you can see after about an hour, these aren't really wanting to pop. I should have come back a little sooner. Um, probably about 20 or 30 minutes is what I should have done. So, But that's okay because we're learning from our mistakes here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on. You can also see we're starting to get some nice swirls in here. You can see how that works. It's going to be a beautiful bracelet when we're done. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on and we're going to let it completely cure for another 24 hours. So it's been 24 hours and now I'm going to come back and demold our bangle bracelet from the mold. So I'll go ahead and take the top off. You can see everything is nice and cured. Um, every resin is a little different when it comes to demolding. So be sure to follow your label directions on the resin. And at this point, you can still see that we've got a few bubbles on top and things did spill over a little bit. Um, I personally feel that it's more important to overfill rather than underfill because your resin's going to contract a little bit and I'll show you how easy it is to just sand this down and trim it up and make it look really nice. So when it comes to demolding, the best advice I can give you is just to be patient. It can get very frustrating, especially with some of the very skinny bangle molds. So the trick is just to, to be patient and it's going to take a few minutes, but I hope you see that your results or your efforts are real, well worth the results. So you just, this is a deep flex mold. So you just kind of want to, you know, bend it and twist it. And basically what you want to do is you want to get some air down in between your resin and the plastic mold. Okay. So you're just going to kind of go back and around and you're just going to pull on the mold to try and introduce a little air in there. All right. Work your way around. This could easily take a few minutes. So go ahead and just do that and do the same thing in the center as well. Okay, I'm just kind of going here around the center to try and get it away from the sides. Okay, now if you do um, have a bit of a lip, you can grab onto the bangle to try and pull it up and pull it out. Um, you have to be gentle to make sure that you don't distort the shape of your mold. Certainly this is a mold that you want to be able to use again in the future. So just be patient and work your way around. And you can see there, I, ho I hope you can see that there's a line now. You can see that line going right across there. That means we've been able to pull the mold away enough. You can see there, we're, we're getting some more air in there. That's meaning that we're getting air down in there to the bottom. And basically you want to get enough air in there so that you can work your way around and then hopefully get a good grab on the bangle and pull it out. So I'm going to keep working around on this and hopefully we'll have it out of here in just a couple minutes. Another technique that you can try as well is to flip your mold over and go from the back and try and push on the back to push your resin out of the mold. In fact, most molds, this is the way you're going to demold your piece is going from the back. And quite frankly, most of them are going to pop out pretty easily. But due to the depth of this piece, this is a little harder, plus it's a little thicker. So just kind of go around the edge as well and push at it from the back in addition to trying to work off the sides. So be patient and you can see there we're getting our line. So you can see we are introducing air into this and eventually what I hope to be able to do is to be able to pop enough of this out that I can actually grab onto this and pull it out of the mold. So it's taken me a couple of minutes but I've gotten all the sides pulled away and I've been working from the back pushing on the bangle to get it to where it's out of the mold. So at this point you can go ahead and grab the bangle and work around and pull it all the way out of your mold. Okay. So there we go. We have the finished hardened bangle. So now what we have to do is finish up our edges and um, polish it up. 